This is Jim Reinbold with Carlson Software. And this is Mark Silver from My Age. Hey, Jim. You know, all the time when I'm drawing in here, I got lines, 2D lines, and 3D lines. I'm an electrical engineer. I don't know the difference. I always choose 2D lines. Well, What's the deal? There are three different types of entities that we're talking about. And if you look at the draw menu, you have your line, 2D, and 3D polylines. Lines simply have two endpoints that con are connected. Those endpoints can be at whatever elevation, so a line can actually be 3D. But it's a simple segment. So the endpoints of the line can be different elevations? Correct. Okay. Now if I take those lines and I combine them together, I get a 2D polyline? You get a polyline. It may be 2D or 3D. So the idea with a polyline, like our boundary here, is a whole series of line segments joined into a single entity. Now, when we think about 2D versus 3D polylines, there are a couple of misconceptions we run into. Our boundary line is a 2D polyline at elevation zero. And many folks think that's always the case. But our contours are also 2D polyline because the only restriction on a 2D polyline is all the vertices have to be at the same elevation. Ah, so in the case of a contour line, they're all at the same elevation. Right. When we start looking at things like a stream center line coming through here, this is a 3D polyline. Of course, because it's going downhill. Right. So each vertex has a different elevation. Now, is there, is there something special about the 2D boundary polyline that you've got here because it's at elevation zero? Does zero specify something really important? Well, zero is important because by default when you're creating a surface, we ignore zero. Okay. That way it's never included. Otherwise, you'd have contours running all the way down to zero out there. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, between 2D and 3D polylines, with a 2D polyline, I can put arcs in it. Okay. With a 3D polyline, arcs are represented by segmented poly segments. Okay. So I have little cords that represent the arc because it's changing elevations. So that's one difference to keep in mind. There are some other functions when you're editing those. So just to be clear, if I go to the command line and type PL for my polyline command, I'm doing a 2D polyline. And when I finish drawing that, it's going to ask me for the elevation of it. No. No. By default, AutoCAD draws everything at zero. How do we know it's at zero? Well, there's a little elevation command that'll tell you what your current elevation is. Okay. So anything you start drawing, if I draw a line, it's at zero. Where's the exception? If I start a polyline and I use my entity snap, and I'm just going to use a right mouse click with a shift and do an endpoint, if I pick the endpoint of this contour, it's pulled not just the x and y coordinate, but the elevation, the z. Okay. So this polyline will be at the same elevation as that contour. How about if I snap from a point? If I snap from one of the points rather than an endpoint? Uh huh. Same thing. It's going to inherit the elevation of that point. Great. Now here's the interesting part. If I start going to these points, which we know are going uphill, my polyline is not going uphill. It's, it's just getting the x, y, and maintaining the elevation from back here. Perfect. I get this now. So. You want to be careful if you're creating break lines to not use 2D polylines because this would really mess up your site. Boy, it would, yeah. So break lines are always 3D. Always 3D polylines. Thanks, Jim. Have a good day, Mark.